Broadcast Variety Theater. Yes, it's Seal Test Variety Theater with Henry Russell and his orchestra, the Crew Chiefs Quartet, that remarkable, lovable couple from Wistful Vista, Fibber McGee and Molly, and one of America's truly great character actors, Mr. Edward Arnold. And here she is, our gal Thursday, the singing star of Variety Theater, Dorothy L'Amour. <laughs> Thank you and hello, everyone. Well, everywhere I look, there's a real honest-to-goodness celebrity. Edward Arnold of the Mr. President program and Fibba McGee and Molly of the Johnson's Wax program. It's enough to turn a girl's head and since I forgot my autograph book and since I'm fresh out of ad libs, here they are. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, Dorothy. It's good to see you again. Well, it's nice to see you. You're looking awfully well, Dorothy. Thank you, Molly. You sure are, kiddo. You're as snappy as my rendition on the mandolin of Pretty Red Wing. <laughs> Take it easy the way you throw words around, McGee. Don't forget you're standing next to a man who really knows about words. Yeah? Mr. Arnold has been on the stage, you know, right? Well, yes, I have been on Broadway. <laughs> I've been on Broadway, too. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, dearie. You were the original Times Square. <laughs> Is that so? Well, just to give a think back to that little theater group in Peoria. If you remember correctly, they said the way I performed in Hamlet, I was the greatest melancholy Dane they ever saw. <laughs> you got that just a little mixed up, dearie. Huh? What they said was that your head was shaped like a melon, you looked like a collie, and you played the part like a great Dane. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really have aspirations for the stage, Fibber? Yeah, I've always been connected with show business ever since I got in my first longies. Pants, that is. <laughs> my first job was as parking attendant at the Bijou Movie Theater. They didn't pay me any salary. Well, how did you get along just parking cars? Uh, you probably had the glove compartment privileges. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, he used to bring me the prettiest gloves. <laughs> and then before you could say see Aubrey Smith, I was being offered parts right and left. The fame of my performance in Hamlet spread far and wide. And when they decided to make the picture in England, the choice narrowed down to me and Lawrence Oliviera. <laughs> English actor Well, well uh, why did he get the part? Two reasons, Dottie Favoritism and Larry spoke English <laughs> Thank you, Ever McGee and Molly, Dottie and Edward Arnold Why don't the four of you play a fast hand of bridge While we tell you about a good deal that's hard to beat Get fast, get seal test Planning a Christmas party at your house? Well, make it a really merry Christmas party with a big frosty bowl of seal test eggnog It's as traditional and as heartwarming as Christmas carols And what a wonderful flavor Rich and zesty with all the goodness of real old-fashioned eggnog Extra good because seal test uses only the finest ingredients blended to its own special recipe. Serve it topped with whipped cream and sprinkled with nutmeg. And watch your guests beam with pleasure. Better put your order in right away for that famous Seal Test eggnog. For Christmas and always. Get the best, get Seal Test. Now, right out of the Dixieland Jazz Band era comes an old favorite. And right out of New Orleans comes our favorite, Dorothy L'Amour, singing There'll Be Some Changes Made. Oh, there's a change in the weather. There's a change in the sea. From now on, there'll be a change in me. My walk will be different, my talk and my name. Nothing about me is gonna be the same. I'm gonna change my way of living, and if that ain't enough, I'll change the way that I strut my stuff. Nobody wants you when you're old and gray. There'll be some changes made today. There'll be some changes made. Oh, there's a 
change in the weather, there's a change in the sea. And from now on, there'll be a change in me. Nobody wants you when you're old and gray. There'll be some changes made today. There'll be some changes made. Ladies and gentlemen, the screen has produced many memorable performances since Oscar was a boy. And no list could possibly be complete without a prominent mention of our first guest star, Edward Arnold. He will soon be seen in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer production, Command Decision. When you think back to such pictures as Come and Get It, Diamond Jim Brady, right through the years to the Hucksters and Dear Ruth, you realize not only what a swell actor he is, but what a versatile actor he is. Eddie Arnold, take a bow. Thank you. Thank you, Donnie. And I want to thank you for asking me over, and uh, thank you especially for asking me to play a little comedy with you tonight. Oh, Carlton, suppose you get the scenery set up and dim the house lights? Right, Dottie. High up in a tower on Madison Avenue in New York is the office of Edward Armour, business executive. It's a very beautiful office, as befits a business tycoon. And as befits a business tycoon, there is a very beautiful secretary to go with the rest of the furnishings. She enters the office. She speaks. Mr. Armour. Yes, Miss Lake. Remind me to call Pearson this afternoon. I've got that three o'clock appointment with United. Yes, Mr. Armour, but there's something. I, I must d- go over those debentures with the Chicago office and make a note of the meeting with the steel crowd next Monday. What did you want? Well, I wanted to tell you I was getting married. Oh, that's fine. Now on the twenty second, you're getting what? Married. Oh. You know, boy, girl, man, woman, creature, right? Oh, yes, yes, yeah, that's fine. When is it going to be? Oh, the 6th of next month. Well, let me check my calendar. 4th, 5th, 6th. Oh, yes, there it is, the 6th. Oh, my. It's too bad. What's too bad? That you can't make it on the 6th. <laughs> Why can't I make it on the 6th? Well, because that's the big stockholders meeting. Oh, well, I the, see. Well, the 5th will be all right, or the 8th would even be better. Well, if I make it on the 5th, what about the big stockholders meeting on the 6th? Oh, well, naturally, you'd be back for that. <laughs> uh, so that settles the fifth, eh? Now I'll take a letter to the C.J. Andrews... You weren't the... figuring on any sort of a honeymoon for me, were you? Oh, of course I was. Things start slacking off a bit in July, so suppose you take two weeks then. Uh, you could use my yacht if Mr. you like. Mr. Armour, I'm going to get married on the sixth. Oh, all right, if you insist, if you... But, but please, please postpone the honeymoon. I'm taking a two-week honeymoon. Uh, Miss Lake... You're not being serious. And I'm resigning from my job. Resigning? Now, 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 wait a minute, Miss Lake. Why don't we sit down and we'll have a little heart-to-heart talk about this? Will you have a cigar? I mean, a big cigar. I don't think... <laughs> I don't think it's much use. Now, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't disapprove of marriage. Mm, that's nice. As a matter of fact, I think it has a rather definite place in the scheme of things. But let's not lose our heads. In other words, business before pleasure. Well, as I was saying, I'm very much in favor of marriage. uh, But each individual case is different and must bear scrutiny. Mine does. I'm sure. But sometimes we make snap judgments, which we later regret. Even the best of us. You got married, didn't you? Hmm? Yes, of course, of course. Do you have any regrets? Well, no more than most husbands. (laughs) But don't forget one thing. I married J.R. Stauffer's daughter. She had 18% of Consolidated, which I needed. (laughs) So I could get control of the company. Oh, yes, you told me about that, how you were engaged for six months while the lawyers worked on the deal. Yes, yes, it seems like only yesterday. And you've never regretted the marriage? Oh, I should say not. Pauline is a wonderful wife. And that company hasn't missed a dividend in 13 years. <laughs> what you're saying, then, is that under the right conditions, a marriage might be okay. Well, I wouldn't want to be quoted, but uh, that is approximately correct. That's just what I wanted to know. Oh, uh, by the way, whom are you thinking of marrying? Oh, haven't I told you? No, not yet. Your son. <laughs> <laughs> see me, Dad. Uh, yes, I did, Richard. Uh, have a seat. There's uh, something I want to talk to you about. Will you have a cigar? No, thanks. Have a drink? No, thanks. Mm-hmm. 
By the way, I thought you didn't approve of those two minor vices. Well, I don't ordinarily. Something on your mind, Dad? Uh, you know, son, you and I haven't had much time to talk lately. As a matter of fact, Dad, I've been pretty anxious to talk to you. You see, there's something... Uh, the that... trouble with you is, Richard, is uh, uh, you've been working too hard. Uh, you need a vacation, some fun. I don't need any vacation, and I don't need any fun. Uh, look, did you ever think of going out with chorus girls? <laughs> chorus girls? No. Aren't you dating this conversation a little? Well, maybe so, but in my day, when a fellow wanted a little funny, Dad, just... Dad, go... do you know something? Hmm? You're not a very good at concealing things. I know Dorothy's told you. Yes, yes, she did, and I hope you're not going to do anything that's foolish. I certainly am not. Good. We're going to get married as soon as possible. Richard, I forbid it! Now, wait a minute. You're talking to your son, not a board of directors now, meeting. Now, look, now, look, son. I'm getting on in years, and I'm not feeling quite as well as I used to. Why, you're in better shape than most men half your age. Why, you can outrun, outfight, outtalk anybody I know. Well, I... Why don't you keep me that way instead of worrying me? I'm not worrying you. I'm just getting married to the most wonderful girl in the world, that's all. And if there's anybody else in the world who knows she's wonderful, it's you. I see. Is that your last word, Richard? Yes, Dad. Well, we'll see about this. Do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. And do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Then I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Ed, Ed, stop crying. I, I, I just can't help it, Pauline. <laughs> Ed, would children grow up, get married, and then you lose them? I know how badly you feel about losing your son. Son? Who's worried about a son? I just was the best secretary I ever had. <laughs> Teacher, you have an announcement? Right. The Earth is 90 million miles from the sun. Venus is 500,000 light years from Mars, and Glendale is 22 miles from Pomona. So Dean Henry Russell is 24 professors. Are you going to beat out some uh, logarithms? Any questions, Mr. Howard Harris? <laughs> I have one, teacher. How high the moon? What's cooking for Christmas? Plum pudding? That calls for Seal Test whipping cream. Your favorite icebox dessert? More Seal Test whipping cream. In fact, you'll want lots of it for luscious holiday desserts. Because this thicker, richer cream 
whips up so fast into the smoothest, most lip-smacking whipped cream you ever tasted. Float it on steaming cups of coffee for an extra-rich, festive flavor and heap it high on that luscious Seal Test eggnog I told you about. Seal Test whipping cream is tops as a Christmas topper. And because it's Seal Test, you can be sure it's better in every way. Serve it often and always... Get the best, get Seal Test. Dottie, before Fibber McGee and Molly return, may I introduce your next song? Why, certainly, Eddie. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've fooled around quite a bit on the show, but now I'd like to be serious for just a moment. A few years ago, a sweet, unaffected gal sang a song and set this town on its ear. She's still the same gal, and the song is... The moon of Manakura fills the night with magic Polynesian charms. The moon of Manakura came inside and brought you to my eager arms. Again, above the island shore, and I'll behold it in your dusky eyes, and you'll be in my arms once more. There's a new streamlined train in operation these days, and one of the stops on its run is the city of Wistful Vista. And here, just getting settled in their compartment for a holiday trip to Aunt Sarah's, are a couple of people known as Faber McGee and Molly. Oh, my, isn't this a beautiful train, McGee? Oh, it'll do. <laughs> Put the bags over there, Porter, both of them. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there you are, sir. And here's a paper bag for the lady. Oh, I thought they just gave you those on airplanes. Uh, this is for your hat, madam. Oh. Thanks, Porter. Here you are. Buy yourself a few shares of AT&T. <laughs> My goodness, at a nickel a share, that'll be five shares. Thank you. <laughs> ah, boy, this is the way to travel, you know what? First class. This train is just like the one when I was in vaudeville. I and Fred Nitton used to sit up all night in the smoker wishing we could ride on one like it. It certainly is comfortable, and everything is... Oh, look, look out the window, McGee. Uh -huh. Look how fast we're going. Heavenly days, those telephone poles look like a board fence. We haven't started yet, kiddo. That is a board fence. <laughs> oh, I see. 
Hey, does it seem a little chilly in here? I'll open this window and let some of the cold air blow out. <clears throat> that thing is stuck. McGee, huh? this train is air-conditioned. The window isn't supposed to open. No train window is supposed to open, Molly, but I'll raise this window or I'll raise the roof off of this dead ratted cinder bucket. Look, now, if you're chilly, dearie, turn on the heat. The knob's right there. Huh? Oh, okay. Well, for goodness sakes, company, come in. Oh, it's the porter. I didn't want any change, Porter. Keep the whole quarter. <laughs> yes, sir. Excuse me, folks, but the lady next door asked me to make up a drawing room, and I wonder if she could just sit in here a few minutes till I get it ready. Well, of course. Tell her to come right in, Porter. Yes, thank you, ma'am. You just sit in here, Miss Lamour. It won't take long. Thank you, Porter. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, not at all. Come right in. Miss. I'd uh, go back to the club car, but uh, I haven't got a club, and you can't get a seat without one. <laughs> so, uh... Oh, excuse me. I'm Dorothy L'Amour. Well, I'm glad to know you, sis. I'm Fibber McGee, and this is... Dorothy L'Amour! My gosh, they got everything on this train. <laughs> I just turn on the heat control, and in walks Dorothy L'Amour. <laughs> uh, this is my wife, Molly, Miss L'Amour. Well, how do you do? I'm sure it's awfully nice meeting you. Do sit down. Uh, thank you, Ms. McGee. Where? What? Oh! <laughs> uh, McGee, move those salted peanuts and the radio and the comic books and the picnic hamper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sit over here, uh, Dorothy. Uh, Dotty. <laughs> <laughs> no use being formal, I always say. Feel like we've known you for years, anyhow. I've seen all your pictures. Oh, they weren't mine. I just acted in them. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were great. We show people always stick up for other show people, you know. All us show people in show business... <laughs> We all like to watch other show people, uh, show. <laughs> know what I mean? Oh, uh, are you in show business, Mr. McGee? <laughs> a good question, and a frequent one. <laughs> sure, I was in vaudeville for years. You've probably heard of Powers Elephants and Pink's Mules. Oh, of course. Which ones were you? <laughs> I was the act that come on right behind them. <laughs> McGee and Nittany, snappy songs and witty sayings. <laughs> We'd open in one, see, singing Yankee Doodle and waving little American flags. Oh, now, McGee, Miss Lamore isn't interested in your vaudeville. Well, of course, I'm in radio now, and radio uh, is... Tell us about yourself, Miss Lamore. My, it must be exciting living in Hollywood. I've seen pictures of your home, and it's beautiful. Thanks. We get a lot of pleasure out of it. We enjoy our pool a lot in the summer. So do I, sis. What do you like best, snooker or just straight rotation? <laughs> With an extra dime on the eight ball in the side pocket. Hey, I'll shoot you game sometime. No, for dearie. Miss Lamore means your swimming pool. Oh, that pool. Oh, well. Oh, they're okay if you don't like to swim. Well, you see, in the picture business, we... Ah, uh... picture business. I may come out there and take a fling at it myself one of these days. As a matter of fact, the story of my own life would make a fascinating picture. Well, if they can do Al Jolson's twice, they ought to be able to do yours once. <laughs> of course, I suppose my natural resemblance to Ronald Coleman would be against me, but I think To I... whom? Ronnie Coleman. Oh. <laughs> Glad you noticed it. Well, I thought you said. <laughs> Everybody says I look enough like Ronald Coleman to be his, well, his... His gardener. <laughs> <laughs> With dirt on your knees and a rake in your hand, and it's uncanny. <laughs> well, on the other hand, I've had experience, too. I've already been in one picture, you know, Dottie. Oh, really? Yeah. If you ever run across the theater that's shown a newsreel of the 1932 Legion Convention, the guy dropping paper bags of water out of the hotel window, seventh floor, second from the fire escape, that's me. <laughs> oh, wonderful. I'll watch for it when it comes to the neighborhood theater. You know, I just loved all those Road 2 pictures you made with Bob Hope, Miss Lamore. I Your thought... room's ready now, Miss Lamore. Thank you, Porter. Miss McGee, it's been awfully nice visiting with you both. Oh, we've loved every minute of it. Sure, we'll be seeing you, Dottie. We'll drop in on you out there when I decide to crash pictures. Well, just from what I've seen of your talents tonight, Mr. McGee, I can say one thing. Yeah? If you ever leave radio and go into motion pictures, it'll be a wonderful thing for millions of people. Good night. <laughs> hey, Molly, did you hear what she said? Yes. If I quit radio and go in the movies, it'll be a wonderful thing for millions of people. Yes. Hey, you think she meant millions of movie fans or radio fans? <laughs> Did she mean it would be a wonderful thing if I got out of radio? Don't she know how the radio audience reacts to me? How? Boy, you stay out of there! <laughs> he wasn't talking to you, Ronald. Now lock the door. I'm sleepy. <laughs> Fib 
Ripper and Molly, that was wonderful. And now, in just a few seconds, we're going to give you some great news about the guests for our show next week. Get the best, get seal test. Count the days until Christmas. And count on seal test for good eating. That's looking forward to a double treat. Seal test red raspberry tarts are pretty special, too. A delicious mouthful and a delightful eyeful. The base of creamy Seal Test vanilla ice cream is topped with a generous helping of juicy red raspberries and a ring of real whipped cream, like a little green Christmas wreath. It's the Seal Test dessert of the month and mighty festive. Chocolate chip ice cream is the Seal Test flavor of the month, another tasty dish. Velvety vanilla ice cream packed through and through with savory chips of bittersweet chocolate. Your family and friends will enjoy both Seal Test chocolate chip ice cream and Seal Test red raspberry tarts. Serve ice cream often. And when you do... Get the best, get seal test. And here again is your mistress of ceremonies, Dorothy L'Amour. To the three of you, Edward Arnold, Fibber McGee, and Molly, we all want to say a million thanks for making this such an important event on the Seal Test Variety Theater. Your appearance tonight contributes to a fine cause, the establishment of the American Federation of Radio Artists Welfare Insurance Fund. And while I'm thanking people, I want to make a curtsy in the direction of the Radio Mirror magazine for the two full pages of swell pictures in the current issue. Next Thursday, our guests will be those great personalities, Victor Moore and Pat O'Brien. And now, Carlton, I believe you have a special message. That's right, Dottie. The first part of my message is a plea to everyone to do their Christmas mailing early, no later than this weekend. The next part of the message is so important that everyone should do all they can to help. 240,000 Austrian children are depending upon you to play Santa Claus to them this Christmas. Their Christmas wish is for a square meal. Care will send 22 pounds of food for $10, and all orders will be specially cabled up to Christmas Day. Mark your contribution, Austrian Christmas Fund, and mail it tonight to Nonprofit Care, C A R E, Washington, D.C. Thank you, Carlton. Everyone who makes such a gesture will make his own Christmas a much happier one. Well, good people, I'm afraid it's time to say so long until next week. And so until then, this is Dorothy Lamour saying keep well, keep happy, and keep listening, Billy Ford. <laughs> Seal Test, Variety Theater's continuity is written by Howard Harris and direction is by Glenn Hall Taylor. Tune in next Thursday at this same time when Seal Test Milk and Ice Cream again presents Seal Test Variety Theater starring Dorothy L'Amour and as our guests, Pat O'Brien and Victor Moore. Seal Test Incorporated and associate companies are divisions of National Dairy Products Corporation. This is Carlton Cadell speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.